Okay, so now that we've finished the swash plate setup, we can move on to tail rotor setup. Tail rotor setup is going to, once again, depend on the type of tail servo that you have installed into your helicopter. In our case, we have installed the brushless H6360 tail servo. Keep in mind that when you put in your servo, you wanna know what sort of parameters that it requires, namely the pulse width, the frequency that the servo runs at. So keep in mind what that is. If you don't, check out the servo's manufacturer page or manual so you have a better idea of what that is. Setting it incorrectly on the forward programming could damage the servo, so make sure that you know what type of servo you have before continuing beyond this point. Let's go ahead and jump down to the bench and I'll show you what to do. All right, let's go ahead and connect our battery up. And once again, make sure your blades are free so you're not binding up your servos once they initialize. And we're gonna go to forward programming. It's always good to have your throttle cut on. And we're gonna go to setup again, right there. And we're gonna go to tail rotor this time. Tail rotor. We're going to go to output setup. This will look familiar to you guys that just, just watched the swash plate setup. Again, it's gonna say field ID because that is our kind of default nothing set right now. We'll tap on the top there. And for my particular servo, I'm gonna to wanna to choose 560 hertz, which is if we tap on the right arrow, it'll go 560 hertz. Once again, depending on the servo that you're using, let's say, say you're using a regular analog servo, you can go all the way down to 70, 90, 200, 333, which is what my swash servos are set up at. But for a tail rotor servo of my magnitude, we're going to use 560. We'll hit okay. And since it's a brushless servo, it just initialized. You might've heard that on the camera. And I can move my tail to test it out. Okay, next step is direction. We wanna look at our tail and I'll pull it out here. We'll see some, I'm gonna do some B-roll as well. We'll look at our tail and when we give it left, the tail should be pushing the nose to the left but it's not. So if the tail rotor is spinning this way, which it should be, yep, it will, this is the wrong direction. So we're gonna go to that and reverse it. So now when we go left, the nose should be going left. Yep, that's right, good. So we've got that. Now we're gonna go to sub trim. Much like sub trimming the swash plate servos, it's gonna center the servo up. You're gonna look at the arm and make sure it's at a good 90. I think it's pretty close. It might be a tad towards the nose. So I'm gonna adjust it towards the tail just slightly. Okay. And then once again, you should follow the manufacturer's specs of your helicopter for the push rod lengths if they're adjustable. So just make sure everything's going the right direction and you've got good control. Next step is travel. Here's an important step. So you're going to hold the travel one way. We got left and right, as you see there. And we're going to look at the slider and see if it starts binding. Essentially, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, I'll hold left first, is adjust this, this number, until you hear it start to bind. So you're gonna hold right, and adjust the number until you hear it bind and then stop. So I'm hearing the servo kind of bind up a little bit there. So I'll hit, I think 98 is good. And then I'm gonna hold left. I'm gonna increase until I hear it kind of bind up and it's hitting the stop. And there we go. That's our full range of motion. Perfect. So in the manual that we mentioned that you wanna set these between 90 and 120%. So if you end up that these numbers are lower than 90 or higher than 120%, you have something that's mechanically not set up correctly. That could be the arm length, that could be uh, the bell cranks are set up incorrectly. Just double check that those are set correctly and you should end up with values like this. You wanna end up with values between 90 and 120 to get the best performance out of your tail. And there we go, that's our tail rotor setup. That's all we gotta do.